On the news, NNPC LGMD Melekiari says Nigeria is set to export petroleum products by 2024. Refineries ready for operation. Appeal court reverses tribunal ruling, affirms Sule as Nasarawa governor. And Senate scraps waivers for multinational companies. Hello and welcome to News Now on TV 360 Nigeria. I am Sibisola Adikun. Nigeria is ready to become a net exporter of petroleum products by 2024. The Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, Melekiari, disclosed this when he paid a courtesy visit to the Senate President, Godwe Lakpabio, as well as 14 other ranking senators. Kiari also revealed that a robust supply plan of petroleum products is in place until next year, assuring that there will be no fuel shortages. A correspondent, Julio Lanro, has details. During a visit to the leadership of the Senate in Abuja, the Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited, Mele Kiari, highlighted the imminent commencement of operations at the Port Akoto refinery in December, followed by the Wari refinery in the first quarter of 2024. He emphasized the complementary role of small-scale facilities and noted the corporation's profitable performance, achieving a 274 million naira profit in 2021, showcasing growth since 2018. What we are doing today is to start what the Potakot and Wari refinery. First, starting with the Potakot refinery, we are very, very sure, and of course, post-major bearing, and I do not anticipate this. Our planning is excellent. We will start the Potakot refinery in December. And, and definitely the worry plan in the first quarter, but we cannot say the same thing about Kaduna. Our plan is to start it by the end of 2024. And this perhaps will be complemented, or we will complement the expected startup of a number of small scale refineries. And yes, we'll add, add value, but clearly perhaps not cover the gap that we are seeing in supply. And with the startup of the Dampkote refinery, we know that. In 2024, and we are very convinced with all the planning that is on ground, that this country will definitely will be a net exporter of petroleum products in 2024. Senate President Goswi Lakpabio commended the positive developments, particularly the assurance of fuel supply during the Yuletide season and the commitment to prevent queues at petrol stations. I am very excited with the, with the narration that you just gave to us. It's part of the renewed hope. Nigerians want to hear good news. And then you came with a lot of them. I'm sure a lot of headlines have been created from most of the things you were saying. And the, the smallest one that may look ordinary, but it affects the Nigerian economy, is the fact that no more fuel queues. That in the next three months or thereabout, that you have made adequate arrangements to ensure that Nigerians can drive into the filling station and purchase their fuel or diesel and go back home without hassles and without sleeping there during this Christmas season. So we want to congratulate you for looking forward. And of course, that initiative is good. NNPCL credited the effectiveness of the Petroleum Industry Act passed by the National Assembly, enabling the company to control 30% of the downstream sector in the oil and gas industry. The Judiciary Staff Union in Oshun State has declared indefinite strike over assault on its members by the police during a meeting organized by the Conference of Judges in the state. The state chairman, Oluag Bemigaolakunle, made the announcement at the customary court of appeal in Oshogo while insisting that the union will not backtrack in de demanding its rights. Amid heavy police presence at the Oshun State High Court on Wednesday morning, staff was seen chanting solidarity songs until police fired tear gas to disperse them. Addressing journalists, the Jusun chairman, Oluag Bemigaolakunle, says the Congress resolved on Monday to picket in the office of the chief judge on the grounds of members' welfare and instructed the CJ to stay away from the high court premises. Our demands still remain intact. One, all our members that were unlawfully suspended by the Honorable Chief Judge should be reinstated with immediate effect. 
And on the issue of regularization, the regularization exercise as ordered and uh, effected by the Osho State Government for all categories of judiciary workers should be complemented by effecting it to all qualified staff to be promoted to their due position without any further delay. Upon this, and with the singular act of the Honorable Chief Judge, I, Comrade Oluwagbe Mingaola Kule Eludire, the Chairman Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, hereby declare that we should embark on industrial action with immediate effect. Now, from now on, all workers of judiciary should stay away from office. Why the investigation is on, the CJ should step aside. Yes. And semantically, there's a different, great difference between the CJ being sacked, being suspended, and being asked to step aside. So the, the meaning should be drawn alongside each other. And what the House has decided, what the House is doing, it is the constitutional right of the House, the constitutional duty imposed by Section 128 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. We have the right to do that. President Bolatinovo has urged parliamentarians of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, to focus attention on the integration of the region. This, he said, is key for the development for, of peace and security in the West Africa, as West Africa anxiously craves for. Represented by the Deputy Senate President Jibrin Barao at the Legislature of 2023 Second Ordinary Session of the ECOWAS Parliament in Abuja, President Tinubu called for a concerted effort towards collaboration and integration. Also speaking, the ECOWAS Parliament, Sidi Tunis, said that the region's prosperity and security are inextricably linked to the people's shared responsibility to look out for one another. When ECOWAS was established in 1975, it was a necessity. Today, it has become indispensable in an increasingly interconnected world. In this global village, where might often prevails, the weak must unite and draw strength from one another. The European Union has emerged as a powerful entity. The EU has achieved a single currency for its member states. Maintain peace and abolish passport control within the Schengen region. And successfully combine the characteristics of a federation and confederation. African nations with their unique challenges require even greater cooperation and integration. I'd like to acknowledge that we live in a far from peaceful world today. In many parts of the world, we see violence, hatred, and injustice. Climate change, poverty, hunger, and pandemics are all threats to our lives and the planet. Millions of people have been forced to flee their homes and seek asylum in other countries. These are not just difficulties for governments and institutions. These are challenges that each of us must face. We must recognize that peace is a foundation of our shared humanity and future. Well, let's discuss the development in Oshun State. Civil society activist Ayo Logan joins me. Thank you for your time. Now, is it a coincidence that judicial workers are going on indefinite strikes at this time when the chief judge is having a running battle with the governor? strike at this period is not coincidental at all. This is not a coincidence. This is an orchestrated attempt to validate the ruler balloon that has been happening within the judiciary, especially the error committed by the associated governor. This is an attempt to legalize the illegality that has been carried out by the executive arm of government. So it is no coincidence at all. It is an attempt being sponsored by those within the executive and the legislature to legitimize what they want to make people believe has been the offenses of the chief judge of the state. And I'm not saying this because I know 
if you also read through the letter that was issued earlier today by the Jusun National Headquarters in Abuja, which was copied to the Jusun chairman in Osho State, you will realize that that protest and the strike in the Jusun by Jusun in Osho State is uncalled for. It is, it, is, it is hypocritical and it is political in nature. So if you ask again, it is not coincidence that they are going on strike and protesting at this time. It's simply an influence of politics being brought into unionism. Right now, there are reports that the State uh, Judicial Council has been dissolved by the governor and there is a judgment stopping the governor from suspending the chief judge. Now, what is the civil society doing about this? Well, it is important to know that the fact that this whole thing came into the forefront of discussion across the country is the national state. If you recall, if you go back in history and by record, prior to the suspension of the CJ by the governor, we had the press conference way back last week when we won because we got wind of the plan to suspend the CJ illegally and other actions that have been planned by the state government. And we attended the press conference last week Wednesday where we want the judiciary, I mean, the legislature, particularly, and the government of the states to stay clear of any issue that has to do with the judiciary, especially putting in mind the, 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 the fact that this is an independent type of government. I have said that the society was lying, that there was no plan to, to, to offend the DJ, I mean, the CJ, or get involved in the issues of the legislature, I mean, of the judiciary. But later in the end of the same day, there was an address, I mean, a statement by the spokesman to the government, alleging that the CJ had petitioned against her, and of course, she should proceed on suspension, why indeed, as the CJ will be sworn in. And then we shout that, look, for us, it is not about whatever the CJ might have done. Nobody says she's invaluable. We are not saying that she has not committed the offenses being counted against her. For whatever the offenses are, the rules and the law is clear. If you must remove the CJ, that can only be done by the National Judicial Council. If you have an allegation against her, pull up those two things together in the document, put it together as an allegation and a petition, forward it to the NDC, which is the only one that has the power to hire, to, to hire and to fire anybody in the judicial system, either as a judicial worker or as the head of the court. So now that um, the, 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 the whole thing has busted, and of course, the politics have been involved in it. I'm sorry, I have to cut you short here, uh, your local civil society activist. Thank you for speaking to us. In a significant turn of events, a three-member panel of the Court of Appeal has reversed the Tribunal Court judgment sacking Abdullahi Sule of the All Progressives Congress APC to affirm him as the governor of Nasarawa State. In its judgment, the panel, chaired by Justice Uche Chuku Oyemanam, held that the petition by the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party PDP, David Ombugadu, was a nullity and invalid on the ground that the jurisdictional issues raised by the governor was unlawfully ignored by the tribunal. The panel ruled that the tribunal, which delivered its judgment on October the 2nd, was required by law to act upon witnesses' testimony submitted with a petition or front-loaded front within the allotted 21 days. It held that no petition can lawfully be amended outside the 21 days allowed by law as wrongfully done by the tribunal. Moving on, the Labour Party governorship candidate in Nemo State, Ethan Achono, has led supporters to protest the outcome of the November 11 election at the national headquarters of the Independent and National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Abuja. Achono and his protesters demanded the certified true copies of the election results it conducted in Imo State, alleging that the results announced by the commission are different from what INEC has on its server after declaring Governor Hope Ozodema of the All Progressive School. Congress APC winner of the election. According to INEC, Uzodema polled 540,308 votes to beat Samuel Anyawu of the People's Democratic Party, who scored 71,503 votes, while Achono secured 64,081 votes. The results have since been rejected by the Labour Party and the PDP, who alleged the exercise was marred by irregularities. We duly wrote to INEC asking them to review that election that they are not supposed to announce. They hurriedly announced that election even before the seven days that we allowed for review had passed. 
So INEC now, we wrote on Monday, we asked them, give us access to the same results that you claimed that we lost, that you declared. Up till today, as we, are, we speak here, we have not received permission to collect the citizens of that, of that uh, election. This is more than, more than two weeks of that election. We have not received the CTC of the election. And all we need is the CTC of that election. Because it, 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 we only have how many days left. If we don't get it, it will affect the submissions we have to make in court. So that is why we are asking them to please. We have had their, their version, their verdict. They have declared the winner. But we are asking that please, please, for the sake of democracy, for the sake of my generation, the youth, the younger generation, yes. for the sake of posterity, yes. so that we don't call them as a dependent selection commission. Yes. Let them give us the CTC. Following the recent kidnapping of 19 individuals in the Galadimawa area of Abuja in the last two weeks, the Nigerian Senate has called for the probe of over $500 million CCTV installation over mid rising security in the FCT. The lawmakers also called for installation of CCTV cameras in strategic locations in the 36 states to stop incidents of kidnapping and other criminal activities across the country. They also called for a joint operation by security apparatus urging the Inspector General of Police, Coyote Ekbetoku, to also increase patrol around the FCT and other parts of the country to curb the worrisome trend. Despite swift engagement with law enforcement agencies, tragically, according to security forces, out of the 19 abducted, 12 lives have been lost. And seven individuals are still being held captive in a forested area spanning approximately 100 kilometers. Deeply worried that the failure to urgently address the kidnapping crisis in Nigeria, especially in um, FCT, could result in social unrest, loss of confidence in governance, humanitarian toll, economic decline. No matter what we say, this is the capital territory of Nigeria. If there's anywhere that's going to be seen as very secure, this ought to be the most secure place in Nigeria. Now that it seems that uh, the same lackadaisical attitude to security is being taken to, all of us are at risk. Now, an aide to a senator, tomorrow it might be an aide to a minister. It might also be one of us, God forbid. But the point is, something very, very drastic and immediate must be done by the security agencies to handle this matter. No time for us to revisit that issue of uh, 500 million naira worth of contract for the installation of CCTV camera in FCT. We have to make the contractor to account for that huge sums of money. The citizens are left without security. The money has gone down the drain, and nobody is talking about it. I'm happy that uh, Senator Monir has brought out this motion. We should support it, and in mandating the committee that will do the investigation, they must thoroughly investigate that contract award. We'll take a break here. When News Now returns, World Health Organization asks China for more details on unexplained pneumonia outbreak. Stay with us for details of this and other stories.
Welcome back. Here's a recap of our top stories. Nigeria is ready to become net exporter of petroleum products by 2024. The group managing director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Mele Kiari, disclosed this when he paid a courtesy visit to the Senate President, Goswell Akpavio, as well as 14 other ranking senators. Kiari also revealed that a robust supply plan of petroleum products is in place up until next year, assuring that there will be no fuel shortages. We also told you that a three-member panel of the Court of Appeal has reversed the tribunal court judgment sacking Abdullahi Sule of the Yo Progressives Congress, APC, to affirm him as the governor of Nasarawa State. In its judgment, the three-member panel of the appeal court, chaired by Justice Uche Chuko on Yemenam, held that the petition by the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, David Ombugadu, was a nullity and invalid on the grounds that the jurisdictional issues raised by the governor was unlawfully ignored by the tribunal. In case you missed any of our news bulletins or for more updates, you can catch us on Nymex World TV or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360Nigeria or download our mobile app on Google Play Store and Huawei App Gallery. On Facebook, we're at TV360 Online. Well, let's now join Tamilore Akin Kualiye for Business News. What's the latest, Tamilore? Hello and welcome to Business News. In Business, Senators representing Niger East and Chairman of the Joint Senate Committee on Finance, Up Operation National Planning and Foreign Debts, Senator Sani Musa, has announced that the Senate has removed all tax waivers granted to some multinational companies. Senator Sani Musa, during a media briefing, disclosed that the nation suffered a loss of 1.3 trillion naira due to waivers contributing to a deficit of 3 trillion naira. Naira. As person concerned, Senator Musa lamented Nigeria's substantial losses attributed to waivers. The National Assembly felt, look, this is a country that has a lot. We have a lot of money. We have, have a lot of revenue that we can be able to, to, to collect and uh, reduce the number of deficit that we have. So in that essence, why, why, why do we give waivers? So we felt as a, as a Senate that, uh, and uh, you can see it has been approved by the Senate, that all waivers should be removed. Especially for those that have told us they are going to bring in machinery to set up industries that will create employment, and we don't see those industries. All we see, instead of bringing those uh, machinery or uh, raw materials, we see that they are bringing finished products and then killing our manufacturer, local manufacturers. We'll take a break and be back with Stock Market Report. Nigeria's exchange market rebounded from the previous day negative trading, increasing slightly by 0.07% as market caps stood at 39 trillion naira. Now, with a positive market breadth, better glass led the gainers chart ending at 59 naira 40 kobo, followed by Motivus at 5 naira 29 kobo. Now, at the end of trading, 119 NGS listed equities participated in trading, and our market summary shows 2% improvement in volumes, 53% decline in turnover, and 1% decline in deal when compared to our previous day trading. It's also a similar story for our global stocks as investors are getting their move in before the annual U.S. Thanksgiving holiday, giving all our global stock market a push and a positive end as the U.K. FTSE ended at 0.25%, U.S. Dow Jones ended at 0.53%, and Japan's Nikkei at 0.29%. And that's all in business and stock market report. Over to you, Simi. 
Thank you very much, Samilere. On the global scene, the World Health Organization, WHO, has formally requested detailed information from Beijing regarding a surge in mysterious pneumonia cases primarily affecting children in northern China. This request for information comes as China experiences a rise in influenza-like illnesses deviating from the trend observed during the strict implementation of its previous zero COVID strategy. China's National Health Commission acknowledged the uptick in respi respiratory diseases at a recent press conference attributing the rise to the relaxation of COVID-19 measures. The WHO emphasized the need for more definitive information on this concerning illness underlying the urgency of understanding and addressing the situation to safeguard public health. Well, up next this entertainment report on News Now. In a jaw drop and twist, Nigerian rapper Ola Dips has defied earlier report of his demise, making a surprising return to the spotlight. The street up sensation Ola Dipukbo Ola Body Ola Dimeji shared a lively video on his Insta story on November 22, 2023. The rapper had previously been pronounced dead on November 15, 2023 by his management, citing a two-year battle with an undisclosed illness. The unfolding saga leaves fans eagerly awaiting further clarification on the rapper's health, the nature of the reported illness and the circumstances surrounding the initial announcement. Renowned Hollywood star Jamie Foxx, born Eric Melon Bishop, is currently entangled in a legal dispute as a woman steps forward with disturbing accusations of sexual assault dating back eight years. The unidentified accuser alleged that Foxx groped her without her consent during an encounter at a New York City restaurant. The lawsuit fighting charges of sexual assault, abuse, assault, and battery six damages from the acclaimed actor. Jamie Foxx, known for his award-winning performance in Ray, now faces a different kind of scrutiny as a legal proceeding unfolds, potentially imparting his future trajectory in the entertainment industry. And that's it on the entertainment segment of News Now. Tamilore, Akin Kole, TV 360, Lagos. And in sports, Nigeria's Super Eagles have been dealt a significant blow as forward player Taiwo Awuni is set to be sidelined for months due to a groin injury, putting his participation in the upcoming 2023 Africa Cup of Nations AFCON in jeopardy. The Nottingham Forest head coach Steve Cooper confirmed the news, revealing that Awuni underwent surgery to address the issue. The injury occurred during Nigeria's 1 1 draw with Lesotho in a Group C qualification game for the 20 26 World Cup. Cooper assured that the team would provide support to Awuni throughout his recovery process, aiming to facilitate his return to peak fitness. Well, that's all on News Now. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Simisola Adikun. Bye for now.